First of all, let's start with Angie. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Angie Birup, and I am a partner and uh, founder of Elevate Design Plus Build and uh, the chair of the Professional Women in Building Council through the Kansas City uh, Home Builders Association. My company, Elevate Design Plus Build, is a custom and production home building company. Um, we build a little over 100, year, 100 homes per year. Um, and uh, we employ about 15 team members, three of which are women. And um, that's a little bit about me. The, the, Brian, are we supposed to talk about why this is important to us or? That would be great, go for it. Okay, um, you know, as a home builder, the impact of uh, the labor shortage is experienced every day. It's a very far reaching problem. Um, we experienced it firsthand in three ways. One, um, we are unable to uh, hit our full capacity. Just yesterday we had a meeting and had to back off 11 projects because we didn't have enough excavators um, to dig the holes for the foundations. Um, so we run into that all the time. Um, we have a shortage of plumbers and a, a shortage of electricians and therefore we can't build as many houses as we want to and, and are able to because of that shortage. Um, the second reason is trades are in place uh, that, that are already you know, in place and working. One, their prices are too uh, high. They, they have this, um, you know, they know that we're stuck and don't have an alternative and therefore they can really price out uh, their services as high as they'd like. And we unfortunately have to pay that, which passes on to the homeowners. And unfortunately, you know, we have a housing crisis and, you know, affordable housing. And that's just, you know, starter home these days is uh, anywhere from 290 to 350. That's a starter home. Um, and then thirdly, I, I, I would say that, uh, you know, they're aging. The average uh, age of a plumber or electrician is 58 years old. That workforce is aging, and from what I'm seeing in um, the data, only 3% of 18 to 25 year olds would even consider a plumbing or electrical job, and, and that's scary. So there's definitely a shortage that needs to be addressed and, and such an amazing opportunity for young people out there. Thanks, Angie. Mm -hmm. uh, Carrie, uh, and I'm gonna take the pleasure of introducing Carrie a little bit. I've known Carrie for a while. Carrie is one of our fantastic instructors and teaches aviation technology. So very excited to have someone from our own organization be able to present from a woman in skilled trade. So Carrie, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, I'm Carrie Lasley. I teach aviation technology here at Northland Career Center. My career actually started in the Air Force. I was a crew chief on C-130, so I was a mechanic. I worked the flight line, uh, reclamation and repair, and a few other odds and ends for them. Um, trained on all heavies that are Air Force related, so it was fun. Um, I'm passionate about this career field because I've always loved it, but it's also growing and changing. There's always gonna be jobs in it. There's always gonna be advancement and places for you to go to travel around the world to get to do it. And it's not something that many people talk about. So getting people involved and getting the knowledge out there, I think is really important. Thanks, Gary. Taryn, why don't you go next? Uh, my name is Taryn Johnson. I have, um, I, I kind of started out loving construction when I was little. My mom was also a tomboy and we built gazebos and made an apartment in the basement for my sister. Um, and I went on to get an associate's in business and a bachelor's in construction engineering technologies. I got on with Jay Dunn in 2007. So this is 14 years for me. Uh, they had me go through the carpenter's apprenticeship program. So I'm also a jun uh, journeyman carpenter. Um, Jay Dunn is a nationwide general contractor. We build a lot of um, hospitals, schools, uh, apartment complexes, data centers, um, and it's, like I said, it's nationwide, so it's all over this uh, great country. I love construction because I like being able to see what I did in the day. I like being able to see things go up and know that something I put in place is going to be there for the next 10, 20, 30, you know, 100 years. 
Um, and this, this role is a lot of men. Uh, actually, I'm on a job right now where there's one other woman out of a hundred. So, you know, she and I are kind of paving the way for more women and the more women we get in this business, the easier I think it will be. Um, construction is great for women because we tend to be more organized and pre-plan. And I think, um, you know, if there aren't people that are coming after me, then kind of what's the point of fighting the battle? So I hope we do see more women get into this field. Thanks, Darren. Hope, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I'm Hope Williams. I work for a company called Transcore. I deal with a lot of uh, road repair, um, technology installation, and computer technology as well. Um, building hard drives, running fiber optic cables, and doing electric work. Uh, I've always been interested in the electrical field. Uh, it's just really hard because not a lot of people give you a chance whenever you first try and introduce yourself. Um, and then I got lucky with this job. I am the only female in the company of Transcore that's actually a technician. So... I don't know what else I'm supposed to say right now. <laughs> great start. It's a great start. Hope so. Lexa, All how right. about you next? Hi, my name is Lexa Palomares and I work with Turner Construction Company. Um, similar to Taryn, we are a nationwide general contractor um, all across the U.S. and international as well. Um, I've been with the company for about seven years now. And I spent the first um, probably four to five years of my career working in the field. Um, that's my dog in the background. <laughs> uh, working in the field, um, doing project management, and most recently have been kind of uh, moved into a business development role. So seeing a lot more um, of the behind the scenes that we um, do in construction. Uh, I went to KU, I went the more traditional route, um, received a degree in architectural engineering, um, but unfortunately my very first exposure to the world of construction wasn't until I was in college. Um, and had I known that as an opportunity earlier, I think maybe I would have, a con I would have pursued a different path. Um, so I think that's why I'm really passionate, um, really about what Brian's trying to do here and trying to develop that future workforce and exposure, um, knowing how long it took for me personally to get to where I am today. Um, and I really just want to echo, you know, Angie really went through um, kind of where we're at with the workforce and what that's doing, you know, not just on a residential level, um, but commercial and trickling down to eventually the end user and what that means. It's a changing industry. Um, especially in our time. And so really just trying to get as many female as possible involved um, is, you know, right now. And if there's any way we can help that, it's going to help us all and build the future. Thanks, Alexa. Uh, Jan, you want to go next? Wraps up here. Hey, guys, I'm Jay. I'm the Building Maintenance Program Coordinator for Metropolitan Community College. I've got 17 years in residential and light commercial renovation and remodeling. Um, I have 15 years in heating, cooling, and ventilation. And so I kind of like round out the whole deal. Electrical and finished carpentry is kind of like my niche. Um, HVAC is a fun fallback because everybody needs that stuff worked on. So I keep myself pretty busy when I'm not teaching. Um, women in this trade is like super big for me because obviously I'm a woman and just like all of you guys, I've had to deal with, uh, lots of, um, interesting responses to when a lady shows up to do the work instead of a dude. So, you know, I'm all about it. And then, um, obviously because I'm an educator, you know, I'm here to try to help build the workforce because as somebody said, you know, average age of our plumbers and electricians is like 68 years old. So, you know, if we can, or 58, so if we can, you know, knock that age down just a little bit, I think that would be super fantastic. All right, thank you everybody. It's now time, I've got one announcement but then we'll turn it over to David and Abby. Uh, as a participant, if you joined us, you will not have a camera or a, or a microphone. Uh, you have a Q&A box at the bottom. We actually have one question, which 
um, asked if, uh, and I'll, I'll turn over to Abby for this one. It says, would love the panelists could share their email addresses with so we can connect further to discuss how to get students engaged with them in their company. So um, I may reach out to all of you after this and see if you're willing to do that to, to support that question. So thank you, uh, Athena, for putting that out there. So um, if, you're, if you're a participant, make sure you put in the chat a question. We have essentially, we're 928 right now and we have a good, um, another good 43 minutes or so before we do a hard stop. And I believe uh, uh, 10, I think it's 1020. So uh, if you got questions, ask them. This is a great opportunity. We have a great panel and turn it over to David and Abby. So. You got anything, Abby? Then I, then I will. Just that last one um, that uh, Brian already kind of uh, addressed. So All right. we, want, we want the participants around this discussion. But in the meantime, I, I can do it for a little bit. So, if you were offering advice to educators, which courses, experiences, or concepts would you want to ensure are taught to students so they can have success in your fields? Let's start off with uh, Taryn. Um, that's a hard one. I, I think your hands-on classes are great. Um, because in order to run a project, you really need to be able to do it yourself. So any kind of shop classes, um, in my hometown, we actually have a building trades class where the high schoolers do three hour blocks building a house. Um, you know, it, you, you really learn to love it when you see this stuff go up. So I think anything hands-on is great. Angie, what's your take? Um, so, you know, I would say that as far as, um, you know, like courses, I would think that, um, you know, actual carpentry uh, courses, carpentry is, you know, used, it's, it's throughout the project that carpentry is, you know, either framing or um, they're doing trim, cabinets, um, you know, at the end, they're doing the exterior wood uh skins on the house and, and you know fireplace and feature wall details. Carpentry is huge in, in our in our field. I think electrical, you know, classes on electrical, classes on uh, plumbing and, and definitely construction management. You know, when you look at the, the data, women uh, actually make more than men uh, in the construction management uh, in, in our field, which is interesting. In, in any other industry, it's always the flip. The women make less than the men and in this case you know construction management they make more um as far as experiences for the students i would say have them shadow you know create day in the life experience opportunities for them where they actually go out in pairs and shadow an electrician shadow a carpenter um you know any work in a lumber yard um, or even just tour a lumber yard to understand how the how everything you know flows in in the supply chain, um, and then I think concepts you know they've got to know how to read a blueprint. That's that's in whether it's architecture or whatever. So something where you can learn how to communicate effectively. I think that's very important, especially on the job site. Um, you have to be very clear in your communications. Uh, with with others, and then I would think that would be about it, from from me as to what what courses and concepts and experiences. Okay, I'm gonna ask this question to Carrie first and Alexa. The, um, as a female in a skilled trades career, how did you get interested in middle school, high school, or college to get into a career that was more traditionally men? I was always interested in just tinkering with things. I always wanted to help my dad do any of the work that he was doing out in the garage or building whatever he was trying to build. So I think from a very young age, just being able to have somebody around to show you and let you get your hands dirty um, is a big deal. There's many females that I especially see that are like, my dad doesn't want me to do this. He doesn't think that I should have this opportunity. That is completely wrong. Any woman can do this job and they can do it really well. So don't ever doubt yourself. Um, I actually had many friends joining the Air Force doing the same job that I was gonna go do when I joined. So I think having them as role models and positive people in my life had set me up to see what I could do and what I could achieve. 
So make sure you sound, surround yourself with the right people and people that are going to lead you on the path of what you want. Um, because you can go to many career fairs and see everything there is. If there's nothing that grabs your attention and your passion, you're not going to fulfill it. So make sure that you know what you want to do and that you go do it. Alexa? Yeah, so I was, was the one that kind of mentioned, you know, construction I wasn't really exposed to until college. And that was not because it was not necessarily offered. So I'm from Excelsior Springs. I think everyone, most people are familiar with that in the career center, there you go. Um, and so there was, you know, a carpentry class, um, the, there was options to take, but I think that, you know, when I was in high school and with the group of people I hung out with, or just kind of what was preached at the time, I know that that kind of dialogue is changing. Um, but I was like, I can't afford to go take a carpentry class, even though it, it sounded fun at the time um, when I need to go take calculus and I need to get ahead and I need to take this credit. So I think that that's really critical is that that dialogue changing um, more as much as possible where a four-year college is not your only option. That's not what is preached and that's not necessarily why you're going to high school is to get into a college. Um, and so that's kind of why it took me so long. Not that there wasn't necessarily opportunities, but I didn't have friends that were doing that and we were all kind of one-minded. So I think that that's just kind of a general comment. Um, but then once I got into college um, and doing architectural engineering and what really sold construction for me was actually the strong female mentors that I found. So when I was at a career fair, I really connected with a female from a construction company. Um, and that was actually kind of my first into it. And when I came on as an intern, um, like my second or third year, I actually worked directly for a female and then she worked for a female. And so it was kind of rare for three females to be on a project team when you only have a team of eight to 10 um, total working in the field. And so that really solidified it. And I never looked another way. And I look back and had I thought, if I think, you know, if I had had a male um, in that very first role, I maybe would have been a little bit more wavering, but knowing that it was a female and the support that I saw um, was really critical for me. So, you know, if there's any way, um, to kind of have, you know, more strong females exposed at high school coming to career fairs, bringing boosts, then I think that that will just naturally pique um, students' interest versus, you know, kind of the stereotypes that they have. All right. Well, it's Jean, right? Yes. Okay. Next question. What's the biggest challenges you face in your current career? And what are your big rewards? And hope you can follow that up when she's done. So since I'm kind of on the educator side of things, um, one of the biggest challenges is getting students in general to kind of come check out my program and see what it's all about. Mm -hmm. um, because of what I do and the, the fact that I have like, you know, I touch on all the points of construction as they as they stand. Um, it's, it's hard to get people to wrap their head around the fact that they can come to a program and they can actually touch all of the topics of construction. So instead of just taking, you know, a one year program where they go in and all they do is, you know, HVAC work and then they get out into the field and they're like, man, that really sucks. Um, I didn't want to, you know, spend a year in college or, you know, in training and just to find out that this isn't a field I wanted to be in. So the, the cool thing about my program is that you know we can we touch on everything we do carpentry plumbing electrical um you know they do hvac so we touch every single aspect of it and they do you know new construction and uh repair so like just the other day they were pulling wires through drywall and they had to you know make as little damage as possible and then once they got the wires up and going uh they had to fix the holes in the drywall you know, so they get to touch everything in this program, which is awesome, but it's hard to get people, um, hard to get people to wrap their head around it because they think it's too much or it's going to be too hard. Um, but the cool thing is, is that I teach you like real world. So if you are working for me on a job site, if you mess up, I'm not just going to kick you off the job site. We're going to learn how to do it right, right? That's what we're going to do. So one of the biggest rewards for me is seeing people start from like, you know, they have a screwdriver and they don't know the difference between a, a you know, a standard and a 10 in one. 
And then by the time they're done, I can tell them to go get the banjo out of the job box and they'll run and grab it, load it with tape and be ready to make a repair. So it's, it's super cool to see them with nothing. You know, they start here and then by the time they're done, they're here. And then out of all of that, they get to walk away with, I can do all these things. I can take care of myself a little bit better and they can turn around and say, I really liked drywall. I really liked painting. I really liked the plumbing. Right. So they're not just stuck in one niche. They've got their hands in each one of them and they can they can kind of taste all the different, you know, segments of what we do in the. Can you say the question one more time? Sure. Uh, what are your biggest challenges you face in your current career and what are the biggest rewards? Okay. The biggest challenges that I face is a lot of the guys that I work with don't think that I can do the performance because, oh, you have to have a jackhammer or, you know, you're, you don't know what this tool is. And I'm just like, well, luckily for you guys, <laughs> I was raised in a traditional home. So I was used to how my dad perceived as a female should do these things, but I was opposite. I was very much the tomboy. I grew up with brothers. So I always like building things. I learned how to use tools at a young age. So going into my job, I'm like, no, I got this. Leave me alone. It's cool. Look, I'll show you a few things too. Um, so it's kind of like a, a reward in itself, just proving yourself that you can do all these things that people don't expect you to actually understand. So like, for instance, my boss, we have loops that are in the road. Um, so a wiring diagram that goes into a mechanical, like a computer system. And each time it gets triggered, we get a, we get a code that says, hey, this vehicle went over this loop. So my boss needed me to go out there with him to go and repair this road. Well, the the where the epoxy was to cover over that loop it was too small of a space to actually repair that wire that was inside of the road and so we had to get a jackhammer my boss didn't think that I could use a jackhammer because you needed upper body strength and I was like I have upper body strength <laughs> like I'm good I got this and then whenever I did that he was just like I I uh I, I drilled the hole around that he was just like I have never seen a woman do that he's like you're really changing my mind on how women should work and I was like well that's great but so that's it's kind of in itself the the bad comes with the rewards great well thank you so much Hope I'm loving all these answers from a bunch of women just talking about like you are really changing how we conceive and kind of have these notions, preconceived notions of what a woman should be. And I'd love that you're all just changing it. Um, but, uh, so David, we have a couple of questions here. Um, so do any of the panelists um, companies offer shadow days or internships to high school uh, young women? Uh, my company, Elevate Design Plus Build, yes, we, we do. And um, just to follow up with that, um, are summer or is that year round? It's in the summer, um, but if if they had time during school, then we would you know try to accommodate that. But typically, it's in the summer. Anyone else want to pop in? I think Diggy Dunn does, uh, but it's mainly in the office. You wouldn't be out in the fields. Okay. But we do internships um, in the summer also for colleges on I think you could probably get on for high school also but I'm not 100% sure. It's similar to Turner we do do kind of entry level um, college internships but we do have um, we are always open to kind of job shadow opportunities and job tours we don't have necessarily a set structure of you know, we have a tour once a month or we reach out to certain individuals, but there's always opportunities if you have a class and you wanna take a job tour. And I think this would be the same for 
at least maybe Taryn and Angie, um, if you reach out to us and you're like, hey, I have a class, I don't know, you know, if you have a project near us that makes sense to kind of go visit, um, then we can kind of set up for the day. We always have visitors um, coming by and we love showing people, especially what in the field is going on. And we think that's where they can learn the most. Great. Great. Um, well, if anyone else uh, wants to pop in, I'll go ahead and uh, we have a second question here. Uh, this is from uh, Rick Weiser. Uh, is trying to recruit high school girls to programs such as welding, uh, pre right, precision uh, machining, HVAC, and electronics. Uh, do you have any suggestions for promoting these programs specifically to female students? I can take that one. Sure. Um, so something that I noticed works a lot better um, so obviously I'm a girl. So if I go out and I talk to a group of people, it makes um, the ladies in the audience feel a lot more comfortable because they see a woman and they see, you know, that, okay, so she really is a girl, right? She's a lady and she can do all these things. Um, it shows, it's kind of like Lexa was saying, you know, having the, the female mentors, like the strong female mentors when she was early on, I think having um, good women go out and show that we can do these things too, is a big, a big attraction because like high school counselors can talk about it all day long, right? But when you get somebody that's actually doing it and can actually like speak to it, I think that's extremely helpful. Great, great answer. Anyone else wanna pop in? All right, well, David, you wanna go ahead and ask another question? I do, and I want everybody to take a shot at this, and we'll go back to the panelists when, we, when we're when we done with this, but what advice would you give to middle school and high school girls that are interested in careers in, in these fields? And go ahead. And, and. Um, I'd say look for summer programs. Um, I've been very involved with NAWIC, which is the National Association of Women in Construction. And they do a lot of programs in the summer. Um, with COVID, we weren't able to do our summer camp last year, but they have a summer camp they do every year where they go over welding, carpentry, electrical, plumbing, um, operating. Lexa is also very involved in it. But there's other programs out there also that will kind of introduce you to all the trades or um stuff like that and then you know get your parents involved in their buy-in i think every uh every child can learn something from their parents too on it whether your dad does you know fixes a toilet at home or works on a garage door um any kind of hands-on experience i think it's great angie you want to speak in oh I was gonna say, or mom, if, you know, my son learns most of his stuff from me, not his dad. Angie, um, okay, so I believe the question was, uh, what advice would you give to high school girls interested in skilled trades? Is that correct, David? Right, right. Okay. Um, I would say, you know, if there's a certain trade that you're interested in, my gosh, learn everything you can about it, YouTube it, um, and, and try to find a, a company that would let you shadow you know, they're pretty open to it, most of them. And, and so to see a day in the life of that trade before you make the leap, um, I think is important. Um, also, you know, just um, knowing how to walk a job site safely is, is important as you're out there and knowing how to read a blueprint. Those are all important things you need to know um, to build a base of knowledge before you actually get into the training for the trade. Nice. Carrie, what, you actually work with them. Carrie, so what do you do? I think that the best thing that you can do is from a very, probably junior high age, if you know this is something you want to go into, we have nights here where you can come check out the career center. We do um, career fairs where we'll go to them. Talk to people that are there, um, whether it's the students that are there or the instructors that are there. Come talk to us. We're open to tell you and talk to you and you can give us what you think you want to do and we can help you better understand maybe what uh, class you need to go into or what career field would be best for you. There's so many options out there now that will help give you a little bit 
like a little taste of everything. Like you can find classes at your home schools, um, probably starting your freshman year that can help you with construction or welding or aviation or anything to help you better understand if this is really what you want to do. And if it's something that you really want to do, really look into every opportunity that you have to learn. So if it's aviation, I know some schools offer CAD classes where you can learn how to read and do stuff like that. Or you can come here and there's a two-year program that'll set you up to better understand the mechanics of it, drone piloting, all sorts of options. So you as a student really need to understand first what interests you, what piques your interest and makes you want to work. Because if you find a job that you love, you're not going to work anymore. You're going to do something that you love. And that's very, very important, whether you're a female or not. But females, find something that you love and then you're not really going to work anymore. Um, but find it and look at all your options. There's so many different things and paths that everybody can take. Look at your home, look at your schools and see if there's classes you can take to just get you started. And then from there, build on it. There's plenty of college classes you can take that are going to help you build on it. High school level classes all over the place. Nice. Alexa? Yeah, so I was kind of thinking about this, you know, as like myself as a student and not really knowing that I had an interest in these until later on. Um, and I, I think back to, you know, like what makes me like really successful now or what, what really stems and what causes me to really enjoy my job now. And if I think back to, you know, like when I was in middle school and high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do or what I was interested in, um, whether that was college degrees, et cetera. Um, all I, when people ask, you know, how'd you get into this? I'm like, all I knew when I was in high school is that I really loved math. Science was okay. And I would try and stay as far, as far away from anything English or writing related, not my passion. <laughs> and so that was kind of what ultimately led me on this path is I loved math. I loved problem solving. Um, and so that's kind of why I was like, oh, well, I'm going to be an engineer, right? Like that's what people say that if you love those things, that that's what you're going to do. But one kind of big element that I think was missed was really the problem solving. Um, what I love most is problem solving. Like that brings me the most joy. And I think that's why I loved math so much. And that's why I love construction so much. Each day is a new problem where you're working through it, um, et cetera. And the environment of construction where you're quick paced, you're in the field, um, every day is different versus working, you know, in a computer or in the office all day at a computer. Um, at the end of the day was a huge decision um, when I decided to pursue construction management over engineering. Um, and so I, I kind of just wanna, not that I necessarily have a ton of advice, but I just think of, of looking at it like that, where instead of saying, what are you interested in? Cause it's rare that you're gonna find a young female saying I'm interested in plumbing. I'm interested in electrical. Um, for many other reasons, but if we focus more, you know, on the problem solving effort and somebody that's finding kind of joy in that to kind of focus on that um, as an as like a something that is like a catalyst for anything else that they can do down this path, especially in the trades. Um, so I just thought I would mention that. But my only other thing, and I hint at it earlier, is you know it's really okay to not like what your friends like you know, and it's okay not to know what you want to do with the rest of your life. And I think just encouraging that independence, that individualism, and, um, you know, in those students as they kind of work through this and celebrating that will help, especially females when it comes to, you know, ultimately a male-dominated field. Nice. Jean? You got to help? Um. Sorry. Uh, so for middle school and high schoolers, I definitely agree with, I believe it was Lexa. Um, if you're interested in like the math subjects, which I am also, which got me into the fields that I have done, I kind of want to be a jack of all trades, like doing HVAC, plumbing, electrical. I have done electrical. I have done some HVAC. I done road repair I've done computer maintenance everything I love new problems and I also love a challenge when you're told that you can't do something and you prove everyone wrong every day in the field of what we do we're always 
proving ourselves that we can do it. And usually in middle school and high school, you're contemplating, well, what if these people see me as a certain way? Um, at the end of the day, we all lose friends, we gain friends. And when you're out in the construction field, you get to actually earn a lot more friends and you get so many rewards. I personally did not go to a college for my jobs that I have completed, but one really awesome benefit of being in a construction field is a lot of companies pay for your education to further your education. So say you put your foot in the door and you actually really like what you're doing in order to further your education and maybe grow with that company or even move forward with someone else, you get free college classes. And that is huge, especially with how high in the prices um, a college course or semester has, has came. So I personally think that that is a huge benefit in its own. Not a lot of companies own, like will do that. Um, and like just, you know, you really have to put your mind to what you want and not, not think like, I can't do this. No one wants to hear, I can't do this. And just like, all right, it's going to be hard, but we're going to do this. And everyone deserves to, to build with everyone else, not just look, be looked at as, oh, you're a female, you can't do it. Or even some men get looked at the same way. So you just really have to push each other. Jan, did I say it wrong? Saying it wrong. My advice for high school, the middle school and high school girls would be um, just try it. Like that's a big one, just try it. Um, because if you don't try it, you don't know if it's something that you're going to have any interest in. If, if you're, you know, pulling your dresser drawer out and it falls out, do you call somebody to put it back in or do you put it back in? Um, if the doorknob comes off the bathroom door, do you just leave it or do you try to fix it or do you wait for somebody else? So some of these things are super easy, right? You know, for, for a lot of us, like these are like, you know, normal tasks that we have no issue with, but for, you know, a middle school girl or a high school girl that's not messed with a lot of tools, just pick up the screwdriver and try it. See if you can do it. And you might be surprised at how well you can do some things that you never thought would be in your wheel. I mean, we're all homeowners at some point, right? What the projects we're doing the most are projects that involve skilled trades. And if I didn't have a friend that was an electrician, if I didn't have a friend that could do the carpentry work, I didn't, I would never be able to get anything done. And I think like I'm experiencing that firsthand right now um, is I wish I had more of these skills or more of these confidence personally to do them. Abby, anybody participating yet? Um, well, it just looks like uh, Athena asked another question about um, if this is going to be recorded um, and if there is going to be a link. And I believe, uh, yes, I'm, we are recording um, and it will be put on the uh, Meba's YouTube page. Is that correct, Brian? Okay, great. And let me say, ladies, you're inspiring me to, to seriously just pick up a screwdriver and fix a lot of things that need to be fixed around my house right now. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just start from the top again. Taryn, what is it? I'm sorry. David, let me, can, I, can I put a little yeah, plug in too? Absolutely. This has been something again that I, I mentioned earlier that it's been a passion of mine to recruit. I'm going to share one thing and put in kind of a shameless plug here for NCC and something we're doing to maybe, um, what, did I share yet? Oops, no, I didn't. And I'm going to put a shout out for even for Jay as well. Um, this really, if you can see my screen, represents our skilled trades programs. And, and Carrie does a great job of leading aviation technology and stays connected with the field, diesel, construction, heating, cooling, industrial welding, production technologies. One thing I, as I've listened, um, this other, these other two logos here, we, we've been listening to this for a while in terms of getting kids involved. And this might be our avenue to get freshmen and sophomore involved. And if you're a counselor in the Northland at, at many of our schools are gonna allow kids to come over as sophomores or even across the high school at Platte County High School, but, and into the careers of manufacturing, construction, transportation, these six programs. So um, help us get freshmen, sophomore ladies into these programs because we're offering it now where we've never before. And I just think that's an opportunity, hopefully to get um, kids into Carrie's program and, and our five other programs by getting them in as freshman sophomore and giving them on the far right there 
safety tools, electrical precision uh, measurement, fittings, fasteners, schematics and blueprints, um, troubleshooting. So we're excited to offer that and just wanted to, if you're a Northland counselor out there or educator, I wanted to make sure you knew we had a new program, so. Thanks, that's all I got. Yeah. Okay, all of you, what is your greatest success story in your career? It could be a job accomplishment. It could be just showing somebody that, yeah, I did something that, that you didn't think I could do, or or just you drive by a building, you say, yeah, I, I played a big role in that. Go ahead. Um, so one of the biggest jobs I was on was the Performing Arts Center. And um, I welded all the rigging holes in the ceiling of that building. There were hundreds. So that's one thing. Uh, my son ended up taking tours of it and I could tell him that I got to weld all the wrinkles in it. And I thought that was really cool. And then at the, when the project was over, Mrs. Kaufman got up and was making a speech. We had a little program and she thanked me personally for uh, doing the, a different project. We had a, the, it's called Mylar. I, it's hard to explain, but, uh, she thanked me personally, which I thought was really cool because she didn't call out the superintendent or anybody else, which I think made them mad, but I was super proud, so. Your superintendent's not on this show today, so we're all <laughs> That's right. That is awesome. <laughs> that is. Well, jump right in. Yeah. I'll start calling from the top again. So, so uh, Angie? Oh, go ahead. Um, okay, so mine, I have two. One is that whole male, female um, kind of conflict always in the field, but one just working in this industry. And mine is, while I am not as physical as Taryn, she has skills I do not have. Um, but just the still the pride and the passion that you put in to any project um, from where it starts to when you walk away and you turn it over to the owner never gets old. Like I love being able to complete a project, problem solve, check, um, but then also to kind of be able to bring back loved ones um, if able to kind of see it. So I built, um, I worked on the Lenox, Johnson County Lenox City Center Library and I was able to bring my nephews there after the fact. And while they had no appreciation for that work um, <laughs> that I put into the building, they really enjoyed it and just seeing that the joy that it brought you know, this physical tangible object and what it's doing for the community is amazing. But um, separately, you know, we talk about, we haven't talked much about it today, but obviously women in skilled trades, we are the minority in many ways. Um, we're typically always outnumbered. Um, and we talked about the average age. So you're also working kind of with this old school mentality um, with people that have been in the trades, they don't think females belong there. They don't want to change the way they do things, et cetera. Um, and so sometimes you kind of run into individuals that are very stuck in their ways, very stubborn, um, of that older generation, not as willing to change. Um, and I can remember specifically a lead electrician on a project that I had, and we butted heads a lot. Um, he would just go directly over me, talk to my superintendent, wouldn't listen to me. And one of the proudest um, accomplishments that I have was at the end of the project, we eventually found our way of mutual respect for one another. Um, and I love, I had never expected to hear from him again. Um, once that project was done, walked away. Um, but he actually ended up on another one of our projects in the area and was talking to another PM and was like, oh, tell Lexi I say hi, I'm just working with her, blah, blah, blah. So that meant a lot to me. Into your turn. I would say um, my greatest accomplishment in the time that I've been in the industry is, like Lexa said, it's twofold. You know, um, when you finish a house for someone, for a family, and you, you've taken them through the entire process and you finally hand that house over to them, it's a home. Um, and it's their safe place. And it's just such an amazing feeling. Every time I do it, I get to enjoy that. Um, I would say the other greatest accomplishment would be, um, you know, I had been in the industry for four years um, and noticed right away that there is not a voice for women in our industry. And um, 
I wanted to change that and make us heard and uh, find our place in the industry. And so um, I did some research. I found out about professional women in building through the National Association of Home Builders. And I met with their director and um, she said, well, go meet with your HBA and see if they're up for it. And I met with uh, Will Ruder and Courtney Reyes of uh, the Kansas City Home Builders Association. They were all for it. And um, that was June of last year. We just chartered nationally um, uh, la late last month. So that is a significant step for myself, but also for uh, our industry and, and the ladies in our industry and those that are, are coming into the industry. It'll definitely support um, those young ladies in any way they need. That's what we're there to do. That's what the professional women uh, building is about is supporting women That's in our fine. industry. Yeah. Carrie, what's up? Give us a story. I would say that my greatest accomplishment was probably any time that one of the C-130s came back with no major damage. Um, you'd send it out every day for its mission knowing that you had done something, you had done your pre-flight checks, everything you needed to do. Fingers crossed that that bird was coming back with nothing wrong and it was going to be an easy day. Um, many times it did, many times it'd come back and you'd have to change a tire in two minutes and put it right back out on the line and get it ready to go. So every day is a new adventure, but just knowing that your birds were safe and that the people were flying on them were safe was the best accomplishment you could ever ask for. It made, made you smile every single day. Great. Okay, Lexa, you're up. Oh, I think I already went. I think Jan. Okay. Or yeah, okay. Yeah. Jan. All right, my fault. Go ahead. I'm old. Um, so I don't necessarily know that I have like big major things, but I have lots of little things that all lead up to where I am now. Um, like, you know, talking about, you know, turning houses into homes and, and things like that. So, you know, I go in and I make spaces uh, better, nicer, um, redo, bring them to current, you know, those are the kinds of things that I do. Um, adding, you know, like a, a mini split system to somebody's house to help offset their heating and cooling costs where duct work is not possible, right? So like, I do all these little things that add up to big things. And so I guess my, my biggest overall accomplishment is when the homeowner or the building owner says that they are happy and they give somebody my name and say, this gal did a great job for me, please reach out to her and she'll get you taken care of. So that's all the little things that lead to the big thing. Nice. Hope what's going on. Like, yeah, I guess I have a quite a bit too. Um, I guess my best one was when I was doing electrical uh, metering um, I went, I was in Missouri and I went on to this elderly man's property and I was there, I let him know I was there to test his electric um, system and make sure it was functioning and change out his meter. And he was like, that's not a woman's job. That's a man's job. You need to go back home and go to the kitchen and make your husband dinner or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm glad you see it that way. But that's not how it is. And so like I did all this work and then I found out that he was actually being overcharged from the utility company. And next thing he's like, oh, we need more people like you. And it was great. But like, you know, at first it was kind of like, oh gosh, like I have to hold my breath, like <laughs> not say anything awful. And then it was just rewarding because he, he was very complimentive. Um, didn't really expect women to do that type of work. He, he just expected the traditional home. So it kind of pushed me to want to do more and just prove more that I can do whatever I want. <laughs> That's great. Abby, you might put anything in there yet? No, we have no, no. questions. So if anyone out there, don't be shy. Uh, we have few more minutes here so um yeah please oh, I'm sorry. um so yeah please uh ask your questions can i oh. give a quick shout out to to some folks um i want to make sure that um anyone on here i think we have several educators there's programs in the northland for kids and and jay uh didn't probably was modest and didn't give up has a wonderful program mcc for construction 
uh, please consider that as an opportunity for the uh, Casey Instruction Academy. We have Casey Tech Academy um, and uh, that, that serves some of our school districts in Northland. Wonderful new program, Excelsior Springs Career Center um, serves programs, Northland CAPS and Northland Career Center, of course. And also I would say there's a lot of programs in high schools now that do have some skilled trades experiences. So uh, if you can find a way to, as a, as a young lady or as a counselor guiding a young lady or as a parent to um, get them involved and give them experiences. And again, I, I'm really passionate about this. I wanna see us get more exposure. So uh, take advantage of those opportunities. So that was my quick shout out, thanks. Okay, here's jump in and answer us if you want to. What can schools or organizations do to be more proactive in recruiting and retaining a large female workforce and skilled traits? And David, we have about four minutes, then we need That's to wrap it up. Throwing out there, whoever wants to grab it, grab it. David, I think that, you know, that can be, it, it, there's so many ways. I would say some ideas would be um, piggybacking off the playhouses. Um, that the Kin City Home Builders Association's annual uh, parade of playhouses that they do, um, you know, maybe a boys versus girls competition and it gets entered into the parade and it's either sold and it not only does it raise awareness, but it raises funds for the school um, or it can be donated. So, you know, those are different. That would be one way. I think another way would be uh, social media you know, creating that awareness via social media, counselors being able to utilize social media to get the word out. Um, and then, you know, simply, you know, the brochures and things that you see, like the armed forces, you know, they reach out to those kids the minute they are a freshman in high school. And that's what we need to be doing too, is reaching out and getting in front of them right when they, right as they enter those doors as a freshman, you know, that way I think it would be easier to recruit women into the industry um, and, and get our, get, you know, raise the awareness. Yeah, and I think part of the recruiting, and like I said, I think things are moving in a more transparent process, but, and I heard that this may have been brought up earlier, but really, I mean, we hear, you know, income's taboo to talk about, but it, it really is important to talk about um, at this point in their lives, because a lot of people will go into debt thinking college is the only way that they can go and make a, a worthy career, which is not accurate at all. And so letting them know that there's so many options, you know, Hope talked about getting education paid for once you're brought on board, um, knowing that right out of high school, they can be making, you know, a living salary, I think is so important and really breaking that down. And if college is really, you know, your avenue, that is great. Um, but, you know, people don't see a positive return on that for quite some time. Um, and so just really working that out because, you know, especially when you're in high school, I mean, $15 an hour is, is the world. Um, and so having them really understand what that can translate to, you know, once they're out of high school um, and spending years within a trade and what that career can look like with benefits. Anybody else? Brian, how are we doing on time? Oh, well, it looks like we have one more question here. Um, if we have a, just a moment to answer that. Uh, one of the issues is that we have with recruitment is that there are uh, many ways to obtain success in the industry. Can you please talk about the importance of networking and which groups young women might be able to get involved with for support? I guess um, Brian already kind of mentioned those um, in that slide. But yeah, let's let's go with maybe we can do one answer real quick. Anybody have a quick answer? That, that was I, a question offered by Courtney Reyes. So let's. Um, um, can I jump in? So I would say um, for that. So the question was, how can they network? And you know, that's such. We all know that's such an important piece of of success in in any industry. But in our industry, there's the professional women in building which they can reach out to and we'll, they will find support and resources um, to develop themselves professionally and personally. Um, but there's also the associations, you know, the, I don't know the names of all the associations, but you know, the electrical field has an association and the, the plumbing plumbers of America association, whatever that might be, they should reach out to those associations as well and, and try to, you know, find a mentor in those, in those associations. And I would add to that Home Builders Association of Kansas City, uh, uh, NARI, which is the National 
Association of Remodelers, Remodelers Incorporated, and, and I'm sure a lot of you have other professional organizations as well, but those are just construction. So I don't know, if, Carrie, if there's any other uh, aviation uh, or organizations. I know that we had someone from manufacturing who was going to be on here that was ill that couldn't join us. So, but I know there's a, that's a great point is connecting. I will tell you that we find our opportunities through these events. And again, shout out to those organizations for helping us find all our speakers here too. So look at that. Well, it is 10.13, everybody. Um, I re we all really, really appreciate North Glen Education Business Alliance. Both EDCs uh, really appreciate you being here. I really hope that we can use this as a springboard to grow um, girls in these, in these areas and construction, um, manufacturing, and transportation logistics. So thank you for all that you offer today. And this is recorded for anybody that's watching. And we'll make sure that recording's on our YouTube page please subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, Northland Education Business Alliance. It'll help us uh, make that a more easier URL for everyone to find. So thanks everybody. Yes, thank you guys were the bomb. Thank you so much. Keep rocking it. Hey, yeah. Thanks for having us. Terry, do you want to end this with the Go Chief here? No Go Chiefs? What? What? Terry's background's good. Oh, that's, oh, there you go. go there we go. I see, I see Patrick in your background, Carrie. So there you go. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. All right. Bye. Bye.